Recording? Yes. Hello, Jaden and Kyle. And um, who else is going to watch this? That's it. It could be us. And hey. maybe students Sophia, in the future. To the Polish students in Poland watching and this And all right your, your YouTube channel. There fans. probably are some people in Poland who would. They'd benefit from this. There's probably some Russian bots watching this right video. Now. Not right, right now. now. Uh, all right. Yeah. Homework <laughs> number six. We're doing homework number six. First. And I need someone to read it. Who's going to do that? Oh, you know who. Go ahead, Sophia. A person whose eyes are 1.7 meters above the floor stands in front of a plain mirror. The top of her head is 0.12 meters above her eyes. What is the A, sorry, what is the height of the shortest mirror in which she could see her entire image, infinitely small? B, how far above the floor should the bottom edge of the mirror be placed? Infinitely close to her eyes. Okay, so A is the height of the mirror where she can still see her entire body. So the bottom of it has to be there in order for her to see her feet, uh, at least. The top of it has to be, you know, it has to be the top, the, it has to be there for her to see the top of her head. She's probably got some hair. Okay, but what if the mirror... So you that's the height. What is that is. right there is the question. But you don't know how far away the mirror is. But what you do know is, this is 1.7 from here to her eye. So how much would it be from here to her eye? Half of 1.7, wouldn't it? I can't wait. I, I am like... From, from the bottom of her feet to her eye is 1.7 meters. And when you draw this thing, these are these triangles are identical, so that's hitting the midpoint. So from here to her eye is is 0.85 meters. Is that half of that? Whatever half of 1.7 is. And then and so that's the that's this height here. Okay, so on the mirror, that's from here to there. That's from here. No, it's not from here to there. It's from here to even with her eye. See, her eye is her eye is there. So you've got to add to that this little thing here, which is which is half of that distance. Um, half of 0.12. So the right answer is is one half one half of 1.7 plus one half of 0.12. You see how that works? I don't like it at all. You see these triangles I've drawn? This distance from here to there is half of 1.7. And the distance from from her eye from her eye to uh, not her eye but the distance from there her eye to this point is half a one a point one two yeah can yeah. I yeah so that doesn't work can I just argue go ahead okay. <laughs> Blue. I know. And the blue marks are Sophia's. I'm telling the world. Oh, in Poland, they're going to be watching. What is that? <clears throat> Gosh, that's so sad. Oh no, am I going to be wrong? If you do this, these triangles are now bigger, but that distance is still half. half that oh, distance gosh. is still half a little. So it's the same mirror? No yeah. matter how far away it is. It is, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, the triangles are different, but that this distance oh, back here is still going to be. This is so disappointing. It's going to be that. And that's where you get 0.91 if you calculate that right there. B is the bottom edge. So look at the same drawing. And Sophia, what's the distance from here's the bottom edge? What's the distance from here to the bottom? That point, see, that's half of the 1.7 also. So that's the answer to that. Yeah. All right. Everybody see number six, how to get that? Some of you did it. It doesn't matter how far away you are, doesn't it? The size of the, the, size of the mirror doesn't matter. The, now, everything else is changing as you move away. Yeah. <laughs> You're not seeing it. That's okay. If you sit down and you meditate on it for, <laughs> for the next uh, half hour, you will... It'll come to me? It will come to you. Uh, all right, CYU questions. Open your book, because you, you didn't write...
write down the questions or open your book. In fact, we're probably going to do number one as well, which was not assigned, and you may not have even read it because it wasn't assigned. So open your book to that page. You know what page that is. Number two, chapter 24. Page 778. Page 778. Is it chapter 25? Okay. Um, here we go. Let's start with number one, which you haven't answered yet. Let's all look at that first. It's the drawing. The drawing shows a light ray undergoing multiple reflections from a mirrored corridor. The walls of the corridor are either parallel or perpendicular to one another. If the initial angle of incidence is 35 degrees... What is the angle of reflection when the ray makes its last, the angle of reflection when the ray makes its last reflection over there at the top right? Okay, think about that for a minute. What's the angle of reflection at the end? It starts out like this, where that's 35 degrees. See, that's what they're saying. I need another wall here. And then it bounces, then it bounces up to here and hits a wall up here and bounces back down to here. And then, and then is that the last one? I think so. The last one is when it bounces here. So they're asking the angle of reflection, which is that angle. That angle of reflection. Here's the initial angle of incidence. So what's that angle? That's the question. What do you think? Is it 35 degrees here? That's what I want to say. But yeah. I, think it's I think it's 35 degrees. Oh, well, wait. No, not there. That no. one's 35, right? No, no. So that one's 35, and so is that. Is it 50? You with me still? Up here... Is that 35 there? No. no. Is it? It's 55. That's 55. Ah. Which means that's 55, which means that's 55. Yeah, how did we get 55? Why? Look, this is the same side as the 35. Look at this red, this line. Yeah. If that's 35, then this up here is 35, which means that one's 55, which means that one's 55. Which means flip that one's okay. 55, and so is that. You all get that without me bringing in Miss Bellinger to teach you the geometry? I just understood the mirror thing. I don't really know how to teach geometry, but I do know that if that's 35, so is that. That's kind of what you mean the whole way. Okay, uh, that's number one. Now let's see how you did on two and three. Two, a sign painted on a store window is reversed when viewed from inside the store. Because you're looking at the back of the sign. If a person inside the store views the reverse sign in a plain mirror, does the sign appear as it would when viewed from outside? What did you put for that, Claire? Yes. Anybody else put yes? Yes. You are all correct if you put yes. That's the, hey, that's this thing we were just doing up here, wasn't it? Where's my little sign go? A little flex sign. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, so if you're standing inside and then this is set up so people outside can read it, but you're looking at it backwards. Yeah. But if you look at it backwards in a mirror, then it shows up forward. You see it, you would see it then the same way people outside see it. That was what the question was. Okay. Now we're on number three. If a clock is held in front of a mirror, its image is reversed left to right. We've talked about that. From the point of view of a person looking into the mirror, does the image of the second hand rotate in reverse? Yes or no? Does it go counterclockwise when you're looking at, at the clock in the mirror? Yeah, yes. Yes? Yeah. Did you try it? Yeah. No. 
Should we try it? Yes. <laughs> Get the clock off the wall. We have a clock in this room, don't we? And we have a mirror right here. So I'm going to bring the mirror over where you can look in it and see the clock, I guess. You can if you're standing in the right place. Anybody see the clock from where you are? Get up and move if you can. Can you see the clock? Watch the second hand in the mirror. Is the second hand moving clockwise or counterclockwise? <laughs> it's going counterclockwise, isn't it? I love math. Yes. Yeah. The, the second hand of a clock is moving counterclockwise. You don't see that every day, do you? Nope. Well, Are you all looking at the clock or your <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. People. I love math. Uh, Science. Incredible. Uh, now, for... For Jaden and oh, Kyle. Oh my gosh! It's an infinite. We've entered an alternate reality. We'll go down and down forever. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to edit the video now. That no, 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 Never want to do as they are. That's good. Okay. That's the CYU questions we're writing now to move on with some new stuff. Okay. Let's get back to the spherical mirrors we were talking about yesterday. The curved mirrors, the concave mirror we were talking about yesterday. Uh, before I get back to that, though, I need to mention this term. Is this the best marker I have? Uh, the image on a plane mirror. One last thing about the plane mirror. And here's the person, and here's the image. And they're the same height, the same distance. We talked about that. We would say the image is virtual. V I R T U A L. It's a virtual image in a plane mirror, as opposed to a real image. It's not real. The image you see when you look in that mirror is virtual, not real. Now, what's the difference? Well, that image is deep inside the mirror. Can an image uh -huh. in a mirror be real? Yeah. The answer is yes, but not in a plain mirror. But why? Um, I saw this in the textbook and I did the, not like it. Here's the real person. Here's the image. This person looks at the image and asks, well, where is the image? Well, if I'm one meter in front of it, the image is one meter behind it. What happens if somebody walks behind it and looks? Do they see the, the image one meter behind it? No. Is, the, is there something really there one meter behind the mirror? No. Oh, I see. This, that, if there was, it would be real. <laughs> now, it's an image, so you might have to set up a screen for the image to show up on. But if you set up a screen behind the mirror, there's nothing on it. What we're going to see is sometimes you can set up a screen with other kinds of mirrors and there is an image on it. That would be real. If you can set up a screen somewhere and there's an image on the screen that came from the mirror, that's a real image. But the it's plain mirror it, won't do that. It's just real because it, like it's projected into the real world? Yes, it's really there. You, hmm. you, it's projected onto the screen, but it really is there. And again, if you put a screen back here, you, you don't see it. We say, yes, it, the image is one meter behind the mirror. And that's the right answer if you ask, where is the image? It's one meter behind the mirror. But it's a virtual image, which means it's not really there. Hold on, wait. But the image, when you're looking in a concave or convex mirror, the image in the mirror doesn't exist. It's in the mirror. It's also in the mirror. Um, you're Maybe. talking about when you were looking at your cells yeah. yesterday with those mirrors? Yeah. Here's the thing. The retina of your eye becomes the screen in that case. Oh, come on. But oh. that will, if you follow that too far, that'll throw you off too. So don't do that. Yeah, now, but, I'm, now I'm done. Uh, so there, but, but that mirror mm -hmm. really would... If you set up a screen instead of looking at it, it, it really would project an image onto the screen. 
It's just that, that kind of mirror. The would, image or this would be never up the would. screen. What? The image would be up the screen. The image would be on the screen. It would be up the screen. No, the image would be of the object. But where would you put the object that a concave well, mirror we're, faces? We haven't the talked about that. That's where we're going. Okay, today. fine. That's where we're going. We're going back to these curved mirrors, concave, shiny on the inside. Shiny and, on the inside. And this point we call the vertex. By the way, this line from the vertex has a name too. It's called the principal. Did y'all read this? Nope. You haven't read this. Got the principal it's axis. It's called the principal axis. It. it has a name. It's a horizontal line. It looks it looks better than what I drew. It's a it's a line that's that comes from the vertex, the very middle part of the concave mirror, uh, straight out from it, such that if you it will be perpendicular to that tangent line. That's, that's the principal axis. Okay, and we said yesterday that if this point here is the center of the sphere, so from here to here is the radius, then halfway in between would be the focal point we labeled F. And if rays come in parallel, they all reflect through F. We did that yesterday, so I'm not going to draw that again. But that's also why it's called the converging mirror, all that you learned yesterday. Now, let's... Let's learn to draw a ray diagram with this mirror uh, that shows you where the image is. We, we did that with a plane mirror, and, and so let's do that with this mirror. I'm going to put the object right here. Here is a person, a real person. The person is standing between the center and the focal point, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Now, here's how you draw the ray diagrams, and you're going to have to draw these even on your AP exam. Sometimes the question is draw the free, draw the, the ray diagram for the concave mirror. All right, so here's how you do it. I would go always go to the very top of the object, start there, or whatever it is. Sometimes it's just a symbol. I go to the top of it, and the first incident ray goes from the top of the head parallel to the principal axis and strikes the mirror. Now, you have learned what happens with the reflected ray that goes in parallel to the principal axis. It, it reflects through what? An angle. Through the, the focal, focal point. point. Yeah. Remember that from yesterday? Mm -hmm. That one, since it went in parallel, you know it's going to reflect through F. And by the way, when you're doing this on a test, use a ruler. Are we going to you will have a ruler. You are allowed to have a ruler on the AP exam. And, and the graders get annoyed if it looks like what I've drawn. Sometimes they just take away a point because, doggone it, it's supposed to be straight. It's a, it's a, it's a ray of light. That's it has to be though. straight. So right. use a ruler. Yes, you are. Use a ruler. Pop quiz. Nate, what are you going to use when you draw these diagrams? Besides a pencil. Ruler. Correct. Okay, moving on. <laughs> That's one ray. Now you've got to draw probably two more. All right, the second ray still starts from the top of the object, the top of the head, but draw this one from that top of the head, straight line with the ruler, through the focal point, and keep going until it hits the mirror. Hmm. It's going to reflect from the mirror in what direction would you guess? Yeah. Parallel. Oh. See, if it goes in parallel, it reflects through F. If it goes in through oh, F, okay. it reflects parallel, just the reverse of each other. So, again, with your ruler, make it look as parallel as you can to that line up there. And somewhere over here, those two reflected rays are going to cross. Now, that's where the image should be. But let's do a third one because it should hit the same point. The third one, uh, there are a couple of different, there's still a couple of different more you could do, but you need at least one more. Here's the one I like. I would go from the head to the vertex. Now, now, if you do that, though, all you've got going for you is the law of reflection. You've got to draw the reflected ray so it really looks like those angles are the same. Go from the head to the vertex, but now you've got to make the reflected ray look like an identical angle. And you won't have a protractor to really make it the identical angle, but you can eye it and make it look pretty much the same. Plus, you know, it's supposed to go through the same point here that they where they met, and so when you do that, if you're doing this with a ruler, 
it really does hit that point again. All three reflected rays converge. Again, we call this a converging mirror. At that point, and that's where the top of the head is. But since that is below the principal axis, what you know now is the image would be like that, upside down. This is now the image. Whoa. Now, that's how our eyes work. Now that's a real image. This is really uh, because if you set up a screen right here, look, that image is formed by actual rays of light. Whereas w with the plane mirror, you know, you got you've got an image back here. There's no light at all back here behind the mirror. It's dark. So so that's virtual. This one's real because it's actually formed by reflected rays of light. So that's a real image. You put a screen there, you would see the person's image upside down. It would be upside down. And yes, you're right, that's how our eyes work. I heard someone say that. Uh, the images are always upside down because our lenses, you have a lens in your eye. We're gonna talk about lenses in the next chapter, but they work kind of like mirrors. Anyway, we're not gonna talk about lenses until we get there. This is a lot of geometry. We'll talk about the eye when we get there. Okay. Uh, there is a third one you can do, which is sometimes work and sometimes doesn't. Uh, I'm sorry, a fourth one. We've already done three. Uh, another one you can do if, if you've really drawn things correctly, very carefully, and this one's not drawn that carefully. But you can draw a line from the center to the head and the top of the head. And so imagine a ray of light. Uh, from the head moving in a straight line from the center until it hits the mirror and wherever it hits the mirror how do you think it would reflect back out parallel straight, straight back along itself no so look this is imagine a circle if you go from the center to there it's going to reflect straight back oh the center i got it got it because this is going this is lined up with the center so it's going to reflect straight back and theoretically that one would hit it as well but mine's not drawn very well because it misses if you really had it drawn perfectly, that one would also hit the same point. Um, it, that's usually the last one I do because sometimes I, it doesn't work as well, whereas these three seem to work pretty well no matter what. So do that one as a last resort, but it should still work. All right, so some things about the image. I've already told you it's real. You need to know that. It is inverted. You can tell that from just doing the drawing. It's inverted upside down. Is the image larger or smaller or the same size as the object? It's larger. It's larger. So the height of the image is greater than the height of the object. In this case, it is. Now it's inverted, but it's still bigger. The image is bigger than the object. It's taller. Um, What else do I need to tell you about that? Oh, one other thing we didn't talk about with plane mirrors, but we will now, is magnification. We use a capital M for magnification in with mirrors and lenses and optics. M for magnification. Magnification is the ratio of these heights. So it can be calculated as HI divided by HO, I over O. So it's a ratio. Now, if they're the same, like in the plane mirror, what's the magnification of a plane mirror? It's one, because high and O are the same height, mm -hmm. right? In a plane mirror, they're the same height. So whatever that number is, it's the same. M for a plane mirror is always one, but it's not here. See, the, the image is bigger, so M is gonna be greater than one. In this case, M is greater than one. It's, whatever it is, it's, we, we, right now we don't know how much bigger, but we know it would be bigger, so you know if you divide these, you'll get some number that's greater than one. All right. What we still need to do is learn how to actually calculate all this. We've been talking about the concepts, but we don't have a real equation for calculating these things. But the other thing we still would like to know is where is the image, meaning how far is it? If you know where F is, then you know where C is, it looks like it's beyond C, and it would be, but how much beyond? We need to calculate that. Where exactly is it? 
Okay, here's the mirror equation. I'm just going to give it to you. It's called the mirror equation. It's 1 over f. f is the focal length. f is the length from the vertex to the focal point. In this equation, that's what f is. It's the focal length. All right. 1 over f is equal to 1 over psi plus 1 over so. That's the mirror equation. I'm not going to go into how to derive that. It's just what it is. Where SI is the distance to the image, which we don't know. SO is the distance to the object, so you'd have to know that. You'd have to know F, what's the focal length of the mirror, and you'd have to know SO, how far is the object away. But if you know those two things, you can, get, you can calculate SI. That's how it works. And that's usually what you're looking for. In this case, it ought to be more. So let's make up some numbers and just try it. Let's say the, you're told the radius of this mirror is one meter. That's from here to here, radius. What is F then? One half. Everybody with me here? We learned that yesterday. Focal length is half of the radius. So I'm going to plug in numbers here. One over F, well, F is 0.5 equals 1 over psi. Psi is what I'd like to find. I don't know it. And let's say if that's 0.5 and that's 1, where do you think person here is? 0.7? What do you think? 0.7. Where's person stand? 0.7. Let's say 0.7. It's away from here. So SO is 0.7. Now, can you solve that for SI? Get your calculators out and do it just to make sure everybody can Whip through the math. We don't want the math holding anybody up. Solve it for SI. Okay. Uh, Not the end of the period, really. It, it do be. Solve it for SI. Don't you leave till you get SI. Uh, what? We're going to be late? No, you're not. Two be five. Plus one divided by point five. Minus... One divided by 0.7. If you invert that, anybody getting 1.75? Yeah. Does that make sense? If it's one meter here, you know it's farther than that. It's got to be more than one because you know it's one meter to the center. Okay. We'll stop there. Your homework is. Your homework is E and F. Egg and Frog by you guys. I'm going to try to turn it off if I can. Is that off right yeah. there? Yeah.